Oggi sono a Varese. Today I'm at Varese to test the new boat, the Navetta 52 by Absolute. A few days ago I was at the shipyard to see how and with which materials this Navetta is made. Absolute is a young Italian company. They started production in 2002, but their founders are greatly experienced and have been building boats for almost 50 years. I'd say they know pretty well how a boat should be made. The boat has just been launched and is ready for our test. Those who follow closely the world of boating will have noticed that in recent years shipyards have begun to produce recreational trawlers. A long time ago this term was used to indicate only displacement hull boats, that is boats that navigate without changing trim, a bit like ships you know. Today though trawlers can even plane and reach speeds of higher than 20 knots. However, their purpose remains fundamentally as means to navigate safely and comfortably in all sea conditions and, overall, with low consumption while cruising in displacement. When one decides to purchase a yacht with a flying bridge, it is usually desired to have a very large upper deck and that's exactly what Absolute has done here. The sunbathing area on the stern is very wide. There's a barbecue and a dining area for six people. The T-top enhances the deck, creating a more livable space, and a retractable awning gives an extra area of shade when needed. This Navetta, comparable to a house on the sea, must have a very comfortable interior living space. In accordance with the latest trends, the living area has a view span of 360 degrees. The kitchen, perfectly placed in a corner of the living room and accessible also from the outside, takes full advantage of the space given. Impeccable decor with preformed trays for cutlery, plates and glasses. A sliding glass window separates the cooking area from the sitting room. The sitting room can accommodate eight people. Around the table there are six seats, just as there are six beds. Two things that are characteristically nautical, the stone-coloured oak wooden flooring, textured to avoid slipping, and handrails on the ceiling. Very useful, yet rather rare to find on luxury yachts. For absolute, functionality is essential and this cabin is designed perfectly for living on board. The bed is a standard 2 meters by 160 centimeters. There's a lovely makeup vanity in the corner. The TV appears only when needed and the closet is capacious. The portholes and windows widen the appearance of the cabin. Dark marble with rust-coloured veins adds class and beauty to the bathroom. The sink is enamelled on the outside. What about your guests? Take note that the guest cabin is large and spacious with sufficient headroom. Like now, one can stand upright, even here at the bow. The guest cabin also has direct access to the bathroom, with an unusual sliding door, which is rather difficult to achieve on a boat because it must not rattle, but very useful to save space. The third cabin contains twin beds. The 
La console è molto compatta. The console is very compact. In this way you have everything at your fingertips and under control. The dashboard is anti-glare, so you can use the instruments better at any moment of the day, in plain sunlight, like now, but also when navigating at night. This side door, which allows immediate access to the outside, is a rarity on a boat of 52 feet. It's very narrow and does not block the passageway. The sunbathing area at the bow is for three people and has adjustable backrest. Furthermore, there is a long sofa right in front of the windshield. A yacht like this should be used not only during the summer months, but throughout the whole year. For this reason, Absolute thought to cover the passageway with an overhang and to provide a boat top, enabling you to create a veranda around the sides and in the cockpit. Since a lot of time is spent on board and also at the docks, a blind has been installed to give some privacy. The ceiling of the cockpit is fitted with tapestries, an elegant demonstration of how this space is an extension of the interior. The aft platform is not only an access to the sea, a grill and sink can also be installed. A door that leads directly to the crew cabin, just like on large yachts, and from here we enter the engine room. But now we must test the performance. Here are the engines. Hanno installato due motori Volvo Penta di 6 da 435 cavalli, abbinati. They've installed two Volvo Penta D6 engines of 435 horsepower, combined with IPS pulling propellers, four valves per cylinder with common rail fuel injection, aftercoolers, and compressor. In short, they have all the technology needed to ensure high efficiency at all speeds. She's beautiful, she's comfortable, she's perfectly crafted, but an Aveta like this has a fundamental purpose, to take you cruising for as long as possible. But now we must see how she navigates, and I'm also curious to know how much it will cost me. Velocità 7 nodi. Il consumo è di... We're going at seven knots, at a consumption of two litres per mile, very low. If you decide to navigate on displacement, gas consumption is not a problem. I feel that navigating from here is ideal, thanks to these comfortable extra seats. I'm able to share this moment with family and friends. This seat, however, is a little impolite. The needle here says how much I weigh. In reality, it only serves to regulate the shock absorber, an extra comfort. Eleven knots, 2,500 RPM and the boat is planing, without using the flap. It's not necessary to do so at this pace. The consumption is 6.6 litres per mile, but I'm sure we'll find a more efficient cruising speed. Here, for example, I'm at 16 knots, and the fuel consumption per mile has not changed, but we're going faster. This is a nice cruising speed. In short, this Navetta, when planing, allows you to travel many miles in a short time span. Let's try to reach maximum cruising speed. This is the cruising speed that I prefer, 19 knots. It seems to me that the boat is lighter on the water, gliding smoothly despite its size and weight. And in consumption, it's amazing. It's still the same, 6.6 .6 litres per mile. It doesn't change. Well then, I'll continue to navigate this way. I like it. A volte le navette non hanno 
molto timone, cioè non virano rapidamente. Some trawlers cannot turn quickly, but thanks to the use of IPS, this little problem is easily overcome. The turning radius is not very tight, but the slant is reduced to a minimum. Let's turn back now and go full speed. The revs rise. 3,300, 3,400, 3,500. Let's try to adjust the flaps a bit too. 24 knots, not bad for this 52-foot Novetta. Wow, look at how far we are from the coast. This boat goes fast. I didn't realize we'd gone so far. The vertical bow of this type of craft is not only a stylistic trend, but serves to lengthen the waterline and stabilize the hull. The straight edge eases the entry into the wave, and that brings several advantages. The bow does not hit the water violently, therefore the structure of the boat is subject to less stress, and the speed of the hull remains constant, all of which determines the greatest comfort for the passengers. The boat is silent because she's solid. In the shipyard, we saw how she was built. Absolute uses a unique method. They produce a wooden structure that is inserted into the hull, which is then attached to it and also to the deck. They call it the ISS, Integrated Structural System. With that, you have a sturdy boat, solid and compact, capable of withstanding the stress of high waves and high speeds. There is another very interesting fact regarding this shipyard. Their boats are sold equally and in the same way in America, Asia and Northern Europe, with a slight predominance in the Mediterranean. There is no doubt that this Novetta 52 will be well appreciated all around the world.